Hi, my name is Craig Hughes and I've been working on the Movie Night project with Jack, the man who likes jam, and I've been mainly responsible for the front-end part of the project. Hello, I'm Jack Wallace, colloquially known as Jack and Likes Jam, and I've been working with Craig on the Movie Night project. We chose the project, we wanted to design something to help alleviate the cumbersome task of selecting a film of an evening. We've all been there where you're sitting there with your dinner, getting cold on your lap while you scroll through Netflix, trying to choose from their enormous selection of films what you want to watch. The project it takes you through a simple Quizlet and then provides you a suggestion based on your answers picked from an API, which I'm sure Craig is about to talk to you about. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick run through of the application. So we have two options presented to us here. We have film or TV, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose film. And then we're presented with a genre list. I'm just going to choose comedy, a medium length one please, and whether it's good or bad, so I'm going to say good. Oh, look at that, we get Back to the Future. So we get the movie poster there, and we get the actual description of the movie, and we also have this little handy reset button. We also have the information on where to buy, where to stream, and where to rent. Yeah, and that's basically it. And you can just basically go back to the beginning and do that as many times as you like. Okay, so the project was built with React, React Router, CSS, Node, and Axios to basically handle all of our HTTP requests. The project very heavily relies on an API called the Movie Database, or TMDB, which is a free version of MDB. Unfortunately, IMDB charges to use their API, so we thought that was probably not the best option. But we use a TMDB as well because it's just got everything you could need. So like it has a movie posters, a user scores, everything that we could basically use to create this questionnaire and we could hit this database and get the information back that we wanted. Yeah, and so we decided the easiest user journey that we could possibly think of was a series of questions that would then spit out a movie at the end. And I think I'm just gonna move on now and show you how we implemented that. Okay, so this is the main component that you see when you open the app. Here we use state to collect all of our responses in this little object by conditionally rendering a set of questions that we get from this JSON file down. Once the responses have been collected, we render the next component, which is movie suggestion, and where we take these responses and we basically append this get request. Use effect is used here so that the function fires immediately after it is rendered. After that, we are returned an object of 20 movies, which we then store into our movie, which allows us to take that data and use it elsewhere. So for example, here we have then passed the movies object to movie card and uh, providers as well. You'll notice that I've also just generated a random number so that the index is always random to ensure that the user won't necessarily receive the same movie suggestion every time they go through the questions. Okay, I'm just going to quickly show what we do with that now. So movie card basically just presents the information and also a button to reset our responses object back to an empty one so that the questions will restart. We also have a separate providers component which makes another get request using the movie ID that we've got from our initial request. This returns us a list of providers for that particular film, such as where to rent, buy or stream that movie. It also handily gives us the logos of all these providers so that we can render those on screen as well. The only other element to discuss really is the uh, sign up page. So here I just use this form to do all of the checks required, such as this password regex down here. This is then stored in this data variable down here, which is then passed along to our backend, which Jack will now go into more detail about. Thanks, Craig. The backend was primarily built using Express, MySQL, and Node. I did also look into using Bcrypt to hash out some of that important user information like passwords and emails, although it never got quite to the point of implementation. The backend's main purpose as it stands within the project is to take in new user information and sign them up, storing that information in a database. When the user arrives at the sign up page, access by pressing this little button up here that's always visible, they are confronted with this little form where they can put in a username, an email, and a password, and then they just hit submit. And that information is pinged off straight to the back end database and actually a user ID is returned so that then that could have been used in the future for accessing their own account. Let's have a little look at the code. This is the sign up form. It takes through the user's input information, passes it through this Axios request. There is a little tiny bit of functionality here that is attempting to prevent the same email having multiple accounts attached to it, but not quite functional yet. And then it is passed through here into the controller where it just updates the database. 
So one of the main issues that we had was the API. One that we never actually resolved was the issue of region, as we couldn't figure out a way to only collect films that could be streamed in the UK, for example. Instead, we just had to get a list of films using the string we generate from the user questions, and if the film can be streamed in the UK, then it will work. But if the initial get request returns a film not available in the UK, the app simply doesn't return any data on where to stream it, which is obviously not great. With more time, I'm sure there's a workaround for this, but unfortunately we didn't manage to figure it out. Another issue that we had was that we kind of underestimated the scope of the project, we were very hopeful to have an account that the user could sign into and keep a record of the films that they'd watched, as well as a social media element where you could rate them. Sadly, we never actually got to implement this. So we kind of have a sign-in page at the moment that doesn't actually go anywhere, but, you know, the concept's there. So I'll now hand over to Jack and his issues with the back end. Yep, yeah, thanks, Craig. So negotiating with Cause ended up being a bit of a problem for the back end. It was time-consuming and difficult. Knowing exactly what the right syntax was ended up being a bit of a killer for the whole thing. And I was really glad of the tutor support during that moment because I would never be able to notice that kind of little detail by myself. Establishing communication between the front end and the back end, that would prove to be rather time consuming as well. It wasn't something that I was overly familiar with dealing with since five weeks ago when we did that section of the course. So I was really pleased to have some support from the family members and tutors and things on that as well in again just knowing the syntax knowing what to put where to put it how to get the exact results i wanted out yep pretty tough the last thing was integrating security features i was so keen to get some hashing in for the passwords and the emails but every time i looked into it, it just ended up being a big rabbit hole and i ended up trying to sort out something else um getting it to be a single email per account that kind of thing was a nightmare <laughs> Anyway, we got there mostly in the end, um, and I will hand off now to Craig to talk about the Agile software development practices. In order to make sure the project was as successful as we could possibly make it, we had to plan the project and keep in contact. We initially planned out the project using Figma and outlined all of the goals, including our MVP and stretch goals. This was obviously very important so that we were both on the same page about what it was we were building. For contact, we just made sure to meet up every few days on Google Meets and do stand-ups so we both knew what we were doing and try and resolve any issues that we were having at the time. Uh, Slack assisted with this as well, as we could keep a record of what we've managed to do and also just keep each other updated on what parts of the project we would be working on to try and avoid Git conflicts as much as possible. Let's discuss the additional scope for development. So we had many big ideas that we wanted to achieve with the project that we just didn't quite have the time for. We wanted to expand what the back end was used for to begin with. We had the sign in feature because we wanted to have user logins and accounts that would store their films suggestions so that they could view them anytime they liked. Want to store something for later? Not in the mood for that comedy film today? Well, put it in your bank and maybe you can come back to it at a later date didn't have time to implement that kind of thing, but it would have been really nice. The CSS, the visual, the UI, God, we wanted to do so much with that. We had visions of play that would be interactive with the decisions that you made during the Quizlet, change the background depending on what genre you'd chosen, that kind of thing. Just the formatting of the whole thing, make it a little bit more sleek and streamlined. Again, it was a time constraint. We felt like getting the MVP in place was more important than those visual elements. And so that's what we focused on. And the probably the last thing that was, again, more of a backend thing was trying to implement some authentication using some a service like Firebase or hashing out those as an emails with bcrypt, something along those lines would have been a really nice thing to have in place. At the moment, the back end is mostly just that single connection with the sign in. And it would have been good to just be able to really round that out with some encryption or some authentication. I'd like to extend a big thank you to firstly, Craig for being such a fantastic partner and also to the incredible team at Command Shift for all their support and education that I've been receiving from them for the last six months. This project definitely wouldn't have been impossible without any of those people. All right, thanks very much, bye-bye.